Hello again, I am Blonty, and if you've clicked on this video, chances are you're aware that AMD has just unleashed the first chips in the second generation of Ryzen CPUs. They're calling it Zen Plus. The first family of Ryzen chips knocked it out of the park from the very lowest tier to the thread festooned monster of the Threadrippers. There wasn't one of them that I wasn't impressed with. And while up against the Intel price equivalent chips, Ryzen CPUs were commonly a bit less powerful on single thread, single task performance, the Ryzen architecture lent itself towards noticeably superior performance in heavy multitasking workloads. Case in point. For a year now, I have been heavily recommending Ryzen chips for anyone interested in producing gaming content for YouTube and Twitch because of the way the Ryzen chip could do gaming, but also do video encoding, recording, streaming, all at the same time, without choking the game to death. It was very impressive, and indeed the videos about that kind of workload were my most popular of my coverage of the original Ryzen CPUs. But today, the review embargo has lifted on the Zen Plus chips. I'm going to leave the generalized reviews of these new Zen Plus chips and stacks of charts and graphs and huge Cinebench scores to some of my peers like the almost psychotically thorough Hardware Unboxed. And I am going to do what I do best, dig my heels into some real world, real job tests for those who want to build a gamers and streamers rig around these new faster second gen tweaked CPUs. I know for a fact at least a few of you who watch my videos have been waiting on the second gen for exactly this purpose. I'll be testing the Ryzen 5 2600X and the Ryzen 7 2700X, both in an identical rig with the new MSI X470 Gaming M7AC motherboard paired with 16GB of the new super zippy 3400MHz Sniper X RAM from G-Skill and a stock GTX 1080 Founders Edition. In both cases, I'll be using the in-box coolers. The Ryzen 7 comes with a brand new beefed up design they're calling the Wraith Prism. And unlike Team Blue, as the experience with last year's Ryzen CPUs taught us, AMD's coolers are not only worth actually using, but are actually quite good. As we discussed in my Zen Plus preview video, they're not actually that different from their forebears, but have benefited from a year of fine tuning and an updated 12 nanometer manufacturing process, which all adds up to the practical result of being able to run at faster clock speeds and across more cores and to overclock even better. The Ryzen 5 2600X has six cores, 12 threads. The Ryzen 7 2700X has eight cores, 16 threads. And as AMD painted in their marketing, has the highest multi-processing performance you can get on a mainstream desktop PC. So let's see how they do for a game streamer. I'll be keeping this simple. First, I'll show you a game running solo and in full screen so you can get a baseline for it. Then we'll shift over to running windowed with OBS encoding a stream at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and at the maximum bitrate Twitch TV supports, 6,000 kilobits per second. These are, in fact, the encoding settings I stream with normally. But I'll also be looking at the OBS CPU usage preset. If you're unfamiliar with the bones of the streaming application OBS, the CPU usage preset balances how hard it asks the CPU to work for encoding the video. A faster setting is easier for the CPU, leaving more room for the game, but it can lead to compression artifacting like macro blocking, especially in high motion and high detail scenes. The default setting is very fast, which is a nice balance for most people. But if you have the CPU capacity to hit fast or even medium, the little bump in extra image quality is worth the harder workload. So obviously the 2600X first, and the first game is Overwatch. Maxed out in ultra settings, there is of course no issue here. 240 plus FPS, silky smooth, easy peasy. Windowed and with OBS churning away, you're getting near 300 FPS and an overall CPU load at around 80%. If we try the fast preset to soak up that extra CPU headroom, we max out the CPU, pegged it to 100%, and halve the frame rate. That said, it's still 100 to 140 FPS or so, so not even close to being a problem. Although I do prefer leaving some headroom on the CPU for other tasks while streaming. The medium preset drags the game down to about 60 frames per second, which seems fine, and of course OBS still has the CPU pegged, but despite the on paper acceptable number of 60 frames per second, the game now feels very sluggish. Responsiveness has just gone to shite. This is our first indication that the six cores aren't quite enough for the ambition of the medium setting, which is hardly shocking news if we're honest with ourselves. Fortnite. Not that visually dissimilar to Overwatch in the bold, stylized design and enthusiastic use of color. It is, however, not quite as well optimized. Nonetheless, maxed settings leaves you very comfortably above 120 frames per second on this rig. 
720p windowed sees the FPS jump up to around 170 frames per second, even while OBS does its thing on the very fast setting. And with only around 60% total load on the CPU, you've got a ton of overheads you can either leave be for the sake of keeping your heat down and your coolers quieter, or you can spend it on the hungrier fast reset and further minimize any compression artifacting. In fact, even though this now brings us fluttering to 100% workload on the CPU cores, the game's frame rate remains largely unaffected. But this is the cap. Once more, the thirsty medium setting resulted in a frame rate that was acceptable on paper, but ruined responsiveness. Time now, though, for something a little more challenging, Far Cry 5. Left on its own, in ultra settings, once more, you'll see 90 plus FPS settings pretty consistently. It is a smooth and beautiful experience. Under the load of streaming, the game shows no signs of hindrance. CPU load system-wide sits at just over 70%, and frame rate lives above 80 frames per second most of the time. The fast preset pings out the remaining 30% CPU overhead, and then some, bringing the frame rate down to the 40s and 50s, but still leaving the game feeling responsive and very playable. Given Far Cry 5's visual detail and fast action, I think I'd probably take the hit on frame rate and let this one live here for a cleaner looking stream at the other end. But obviously this is where the line is drawn, no real point in even trying the medium preset. Moving on up now to the big boy, 2700X, two extra cores to play with, and thus four more threads over the 2600X. And the 2700X has just a little extra pazow in the clock speeds. Overwatch doesn't really care. It wasn't CPU bound on the 2600X, so the extra playroom on the 2700 doesn't help it. Until that is, of course, you start doing more than one thing. In the stock setup, OBS and Overwatch only keep the CPU busy to half its capacity and the game frame rate keeps teasing 300 FPS. This is our first clue, because while two more CPU cores doesn't sound like that much on paper, 8 versus 6, under a multitasking workload, it really can make a significant difference in being able to share those loads around further. The fast preset here brings CPU usage bobbing to around 90%, and the game still runs like butter on a hot pan. This is the sweet spot. In a game like this, fast will get you crispy streams and enough overhead left for ancillary stuff. Fortnite, much like Overwatch, didn't have a CPU bottleneck on the 2600X, so once more, the 2700X sees pretty much the same raw game performance with this title. Maintaining that under OBS's very fast encoding, and barely scraping the bottom of 50% CPU utilization. Even the fast encoding setting now only wants 70% CPU space for the game and the stream encode. Once again, shining a light on why the 2700X is the golden boy for streamers and content creators. Those extra threads sure do come in handy, but it gets better. Because in fact, even the medium preset can't slam the brakes on. 90% CPU hunger, the game is still running at 120 to 150 frames per second without a single hitch or loss of responsive feel. So that's pretty good, isn't it? But hey, I'd expect we'll hit the wall on the medium preset with the Far Cry 5 test, right? Raw, the game sees no significant boost, as once more, the 2600X's 12 threads were enough to keep the game fed with all it wanted and needed. So the 2700X 16 threads just leaves us with more overhead. You may be able to predict this by now, but about 60% load when under the stock configuration and the game still flirts with triple digit frame rates. The fast encode asks for about 80% CPU time, while the game still maintains well above 60 frames per second, usually living at around the 70s in fact. While the medium preset does pull the game back down to under 60 frames per second and the CPU load floats in the mid to high 90s, unlike the littler sibling which choked off the gameplay feel, here there's enough room for the game to still feel sharp, responsive and very highly playable. So though, the message here is simple. Either CPU can be the heart of a very capable gaming and streaming rig. It's just the 2600K will ask for slightly more concessions for the video encoder. For my money, in the choice between the two, I'd strongly recommend the 2700X. It is about $100 US extra over the 2600X, but if you are a multitasker and indeed someone who is or wants to become a streamer, that is an extra hundy extremely well spent. It will make a significant and noticeable difference to your workflow. If you're more of a pure gamer and not worried about content production and streaming specifically, or you just want to do it a bit casually here and there, the 2600X will make a superb choice. Because as you saw, a game on its own on either of these chips didn't see any significant CPU bottlenecking, so actual game performance wasn't actually that different. 
Both chips remain as impressive as I'd anticipated based on what we already knew the first gen forebears could do. As far as I'm concerned, Team Red continues to nail it. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful or interesting, insightful. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.